Welcome into Between the Pylons. I'm John Camacho. And this is Jacob Waters. And I went a little too loud there. And Sorry about that. Guy. I'm today. here for it today, bro. The Miami Dolphins are making some fucking moves. They are. I'm pumped to talk about it. All right, this is what we're doing today, all right? We are doing the amazing trade that happened between the 49ers, Eagles, and Dolphins. All of that. We're going to break that down. Listen, it's happened for a couple days. We're not going to go deep dive because if you're somebody who follows football, follows uh, the sport, you've probably watched the breakdown enough times. But we are going to give our thoughts, a couple unique takes here and there, and then we're going to get right in to our mock draft. Our first full mock draft of the season. Crazy we went this long without it. Yeah, this is an individual mock, though. This is a mock no. where we did a one... One, two, one, you know, three. Okay. We worked our way down. <laughs> and then and then in like the, the bottom half, it was like, okay, I'm going to do the next three. You do the next yeah. three. We worked together. We we kind of talked it out a little bit. A couple ones that I disagreed with that you that you were, had, you know, very strong. Excuse me, I can't talk. Uh, that you were very passionate about. A couple that you disagreed well, with a, that I'm very passionate about. There's a major one that you did that I disagreed yeah, with. So and yeah, and I'm, hey, I'm, I'm here for it. Let's, we're, uh, we're going to have some fun with that. Before we get into that, let's talk about the trade, all right? So 49ers at 12. Trade with the Miami Dolphins at three. They swap. Dolphins get two first and a three all next year. They got no assets for this this uh, this draft, which is fine. COVID year, totally fine. You know, yeah. uh, acquiring picks miss. next year, especially this is the year if you're going to miss some picks. Hey, miss this year. Um, so we get a 2021 first, third, and then a first in 2022 first, third, and then a fir- uh, first in 2023. And then I do a live stream, right? I struggle to do a live stream. My first live stream ever on YouTube. You were there. <laughs> it's like a five minute you, live. You kept going. Is it recording? I don't know. And I'm know. sitting there like, talk, dumbass. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> There's other people watching. It was so bad. It was so bad. And then I and I literally was like, I, I, I'm done. I'm sorry. Like, and got off. Immediately deleted it. Nobody needs to see that. It is erased from the universe. And then uh, not five minutes. Like I'm on my phone. Have already like positioned the camera and everything. And then boom. Another trade. And I literally, all I saw was Eagles trade. I was like, there's another fucking trade. That's awesome. Eagles trade with the fucking Dolphins. That's even more often. Awesome. We go f- from 12 to 6. Give up one of the first that we got from uh, from the 49ers. Swap some mid-round picks this year, which doesn't matter at all. Like, I think we swapped a fourth for a That's fifth. Minimal, yeah. Whatever. And we went back to thir- back to six. Basically, we got an extra first and a third in the next two drafts for uh, to go from three to six. And then, and then I mean, we'll we'll break down the 49ers. I'm a Dolphins fan. We're going to talk Dolphins first, then we'll break down the rest of the teams involved. This is my take on it, and I'm just going to kind of keep rolling. I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm talking over you a little bit, um, but. My take is Dolphins are in a position where they probably they either one of two things. One, they had three names on their board. And they said, if we go down to six, we are guaranteed one of these names, assuming a team trades up for a quarterback, right? Three names on their board. They know a quarterback's going to three, four, five, six. They're getting one of their three. They're happy. They can uh, they can acquire assets and get one of the guys that they definitely wanted. Or, and, and I think this is a real possibility, there is a name that is going to go in the top ten that nobody's thinking about. And always it, is. There, it always happens. And I believe there's a chance, I'm not saying this is for sure, that there's a chance that the Dolphins are looking at their board and they're saying, I'm going to pick a name out of my ass, Jalen Phillips, who's who's projected to be a mid-first, late-first-round guy, right? Jalen Phillips, one of, like a guy like that, and it doesn't have to be him, but they're like, man, this is the top guy on our board. We see, we see superstar potential on, of him. Let's move back and still guarantee that we're getting him because there's no way, like, ever, there, there's no way that he's going to go this early and we can move back, acquire assets, and still get the guy that we would have taken at three if we had to. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm 100%. I, I think it's the first option. I really do. I'm putting that possibility out there because I do think it's a chance. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you mention it like that, it's something that the Raiders should have entertained whenever they wanted to go Clell and Farrell because, and Damon Arnett for that matter, they, those were guys that on their board specifically that we had not seen as much interest in from anyone else. So, yeah, if you build your big board a certain way and it's stacked up and you're like, hey, why do it here when we can do it here and, and get the same assets? So your first deal moving back to 12, I was I was glad to see you pick up those assets. I was disappointed to see the overall superstar player that you lose based on where that pick goes. Mm-hmm. And I felt you were the same. You're exactly the same. The same. You're, you're, you, all you can do is be happy because of what you just raked in. Yeah. Totally fine. But at 12... 
listen, let's be honest, this is a very stacked class, uh, top heavy, and at a certain point it does drop, you know, and yeah, I would say at 12, I would say by roof. 12, whoever gets taken there very well could hit, but overall, talent-wise, you, you want to be there. So when y'all made that move yeah. back to six, I thought it was flawless. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Look, and, and that was the big thing is, you know, I, I we messaged in our group chat right as that happened, and I was like, you know, I, th- I knew we were going to trade out. I knew we were going to trade out of three. It just made too much sense that we would. Thought we would get more than two firsts and a, and a third, first of all, like especially if we're going to make that big of a jump. And if we were going to make that jump, I would have wanted two firsts from a team that I don't think is going to be in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl conversation the next two years. The 49ers getting their first, like that, that could very well be in the 30s or late 20s. So probably going to be in the late 20s, like let's be honest. So, yeah, that, that was definitely – that was a kick in the nuts a little bit as far as, like, I thought we could get more, and I didn't love the value from the 49ers. I didn't like that trade. I'll be honest. And I was excited at the moment, my first reaction. But the more I thought about it, like, especially after we made the second trade, I would probably would have been sitting here being like, yeah, I don't like it. I, I You know, I think we could have gotten more from a Carolina Panthers team that I don't know where they're going to be drafting next year. I think we could have gotten, you know, or similar from a Carolina Panthers team. I think we could have gotten similar from, a, you know, a number of teams in that same range. And from teams that I don't think are going to be superstars, the 49ers are stacked everywhere. So that was like a little bit of a downside. And I'll still stand by that. Like we have, we're picking the 49ers first round pick next year. We traded our, we traded our first round pick to the Eagles. And yeah. that's, that's a little bit of a stinger. Cause I, I think the Dolphins are going to be dra- drafting ahead of the 49ers next year. Well, would be, uh, so, yeah, hopefully so, but overall, like we go to six, Hey, we're, we gained assets in the next two drafts and we're still going to get our guy pumped as shit. Pumped his shit for the Dolphins. Uh, we'll transition away from your fins then and yep. kind of kick it to with the 49ers making that move. So, it, and I haven't heard any other, what, uh, I'm trying to think, arguments entertained here. It's mm-hmm. quarterback. Oh, of course. Yeah. Game over. I haven't, I haven't even seen the crazy people who like to say shit just to say the stuff. Yeah. They haven't even gone that way. It's quarterback, but at number three, and we'll, I guess we'll, we'll save it for the mock, you know, because we got that coming. Um, yeah. But... We can just say this. Let's, Kyle Shanahan has somebody that he feels you. You don't make this trade yeah. if your guy's not there. At three. Let's do it this way because I do want this conversation to be for the mock, and I, I think we're probably going to cut out the mock conversation. So, so we're going to save that part for the mock. Please, you know, keep watching for that. And, and I want to go a different way. Yeah, the 49ers have said like assume they're drafting a quarterback. Period. Who who it's going to be? We'll discuss a little bit later. They're drafting a quarterback. They're the 49ers have said they're keeping Garoppolo for this season. Do you believe that? No, I think I don't it's, either. it's just coach talk. I mean, yeah. that's the that's the talk that you have to have because technically you never know what can happen when it comes to the NFL draft mm-hmm. unless you're picking at one. Mm-hmm. There's just no way around it. So, yeah, you're going to say that it's like the Bears saying that they're rocking with Andy Dalton. Yeah. You're it telling me unlikely. that if if some wet dream scenario happens and let's just say Justin Fields takes a fall, mm-hmm. takes a draft day fall, or Something like that. Trey Lance any, or, any, yeah, yeah. Any, anyone yeah. like that goes past like an eight-ish. You're not trading up? Come on. Yeah. There, there's, there are always things that can happen. You're, you're doing what you're supposed to do because you're backing your players that are currently on your team. Yeah. But, I mean, and, we, we have seen that said time and time again go the opposite way. Yeah, and also, they're, they're, they, you don't if you have an asset and you want to get the most for your asset – you don't sit around saying, "Hey, I'm trying to trade this asset. I'm trying to sell." Like yeah. you don't, you get a lower price, right? Like if you you're trying to drum up as much interest for the for Garoppolo. And the thing is, Garoppolo, I think is going to be playing on the Bears next year. I really do. I think the Bears wow. could sit in the 49ers a, a first round pick. Garoppolo to me is an upgrade over any of the quarterbacks that were was on the roster in 2020 and will be on the roster in 2021 as of right now. Um, yeah, I think I think that's just the obvious one because the Bears are picking at 20. They haven't made a move yet. It's gonna cost a fucking lot to get up there. It's gonna cost a lot. Now, now I, I've said multiple times on this podcast. I think they're probably going to get up there somehow. There's five quarterbacks that are in the first round conversation, and we can discuss them. You know, you might not agree with five being first round quarterbacks, but there's five that are consistently a first round conversation. And there's a lot of fucking teams that might take one. You got the three guaranteed going one, two, three. You're not getting to three of them. Then you have two left, and you you don't. I mean, realistically, you don't. You think the Panthers are probably taking one. You don't know about the the Broncos. You don't know about the the Patriots who might take one. You don't know about any other fucking wild card out there that that maybe want to upgrade. I, I mean, yeah, there's a, there's too many teams out there that could want a quarter. Plus, you got teams behind you that's still that they might want to upgrade. We don't know. I mean, we don't know what, what those teams are thinking. So yeah, the Bears are going to be kind of 
shit out of luck and yeah. without any, you know, unless maybe, hey, maybe they're Kellen Monty. Maybe they fucking, I mean, I'm, I picked him because, um, you know, Chris Sims, I was, who I have I was, a lot of respect for. I was for. about to mention that. Yeah, thing. yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 Chris Sims has him as a first round quarterback in this draft. Like, he, he really likes Kellen Mond. So, like, maybe there's one franchise out there that would agree and would take him and say, they, they could look at Kellen Mond and see Dak Prescott. That's the comp. So, I mean, if you if you believe that, if you're the team that believes that, if you're the Bears and you're willing to risk your job on that, hey, more power to you. But it's possible. I'm putting out I'm putting out possibilities. I, I agree with you. I was, yeah. I was. It just hit me too. Whenever we were talking about this, that saying, what five quarterbacks is what is scripted to go. Yeah. Um, we heard that last year though with the Jacob Eason being you know tossed around in the conversation oh, yeah. and, ha- and then in the the fall that he had. So the the hype definitely you know. Gets, yeah, yeah it, it, we never know the to gas to all that up. Yeah, but I'm more I'm more led to believe that there is a chance that a sixth could go before it sticks with oh, the yeah. five. Not I think going. I think it's very very possible. I, I think there's a chance that someone pulls their. You know, I mean, Chris Sims, a highly respected guy. Yeah, who's to say that? Listen, let's. It's Mayock over at the Raiders, right? Yeah, Mayock has has been very unique in what he's been doing for yeah. a long time. I'm not saying that they're going to go quarterback. I'm just saying that different guys evaluate different levels of talent hey, in different manners. There's there's a lot of teams you could throw off with that conversation. Washington's the other team I was thinking of that's behind yeah. the Bears, by the way. Another team, like, are they going in with Fitz? It sounds like it, but, I mean, shit, do you want to go in with well, Fitz? I like Probably Heineke, not. too. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, well, yeah you, Heineke's you the other yeah, guy. You're right. You don't know what's right. going to happen. Yeah, you're right. Uh, going to be a lot of questions. It's a very interesting draft yeah. because – it, there are so many different paths. I, I, I'm What's so going to happen with the Sam Darnold? Yeah. Hey, I don't know. And that's the thing. I think one of those two quarterbacks, Garoppolo or Sam Darnold, probably going to get moved to one of these teams. To me, it, the Bears are the team. They have no starting quarterback on their roster right now. And I'm sorry, Andy Dalton lovers. And, and I get it. But I saw what Andy Dalton did with a fucking awesome roster with the Cowboys. I understand the Cowboys' offensive line, not great. Their defense was terrible last year. You can't tell me those weapons were not good enough to win some fucking games, though. There's a reason Dak got paid. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, so so that that's good. Let's touch on the Eagles. Did you like the move for the Eagles really quick? Uh, it's hard to, like, put a name with the Eagles because at 12, yeah, it's like... Yeah, I, I, like, I like the move for the Eagles because if they... Genu- and the, the report that came out was they genuinely feel like Jamar Chase will not be there. And that was their wide receiver one. Move down to 12, and then you're going to get whoever you want at wide receiver there. Yeah. It's it's wide receiver. I'm not entertaining anything else in my head. Okay. See, I, I would entertain I would entertain corner. I really would. There's a chance. I would actually yes. prefer a corner over wide receiver for the Eagles. To me, the Eagles are in a little bit of a rebuild mode. And wide receiver, I've always said, and I will continue to say, wide receiver is the, the, the position you pick when you already have a team put together. And and that's just my take, and I you know that other teams have been have disagreed with me on that and gone a different way on that. But for me, that's I, I'm saying I would like corner. I do agree it's probably going to be wide receiver at twelve. I, I just think yeah. with the the names that are up there, yeah. uh, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, yeah. one of those guys very well could fall to them right there. Yeah. You pick up some assets along the way. Why not? Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Um, all right, so let's move on to our mock draft. Are you anywhere else you want to go with that? I think we covered it. We're good. Lot. All right. Uh, okay, so cool. I'm not gonna, all right, so let's go to our mock draft. Uh, we we'll just start with number one. I don't I don't yeah. need to lead it into. Yeah, it, I'm do about I? to say a, 30, <laughs> a thirty-two through one just feels kind of trivial because yeah, you of know course. what we're getting. Oh well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, all right, so Trevor Lawrence, number one. I mean, ja- the Jags are taking Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Urban Meyer doesn't take that job without knowing he's getting Trevor Lawrence. Anywhere else to go with that? I mean, <laughs> no. Uh, I, I think Trevor's going to step into that job and immediately propel that team going forward. And they have a lot of assets. Yeah. Uh, I, this is one I, I want to talk about with the Jets at number two. And I, this is something that we've been saying. Look, hey, guys, we've been hitting it a little bit on this pod. I'm not saying we have 100% uh, success rate, but, like, we have been – Calling a lot of shit lately, pretty fucking early, and I'm calling like I'm I'm putting this in the win column unless it doesn't start working out. But Zach Wilson has turned into the consensus number two pick and the consensus like clearly number two quarterback in the in, in this class. That's just how it's kind of gone. The farther into this process we've gone, and a lot of that's the pro day with his ridiculous throw and all that. Hey, we've been saying that since we looked at quarterbacks. Yeah. Since we since we broke down the quarterbacks, we said hey. Zach Wilson's better than all these other guys, and it's really not that fucking close. Zach Wilson and the the thing that people are enamored by right now that they saw at Pro Day, that the, and they've been watching it all year too, is off balance throws. His yeah. his body control, it's the torque that he's able to use, it's the natural throwing ability. It is just to be a baller is something that cannot be taught. I yeah. think that's one of the reasons that Baker Mayfield went so high in the class that he went, just yeah. because you you have that dog in you kind of thing. Yeah. You know, Trevor Lawrence. It sucks for Zach Wilson coming out in a year where Trevor Lawrence did. 
um, because there's no, there's no ifs, ands, yeah. or buts about that. Hey. But Zach Wilson is going to be a very good starter in this league for many years to come. Very the upset. Jets cannot go wrong. Yeah. I'm very upset. Now, look, I'll, I'll go a step further than I think even you would. He would be the number one quarter, number one quarterback taken in last year's class. He would be the number one quarterback taken in the year before his class. He would be the number one quarterback taken in the in the Baker Mayfield class. All those classes. He's the number one guy. This is a dude, in my personal opinion, and you don't have to agree with this, wrong. but he is a fucking dude, and we have to get out of the mindset that I understand it's a one-year like wonder kind of thing. Nobody knew his name this time last year. I get it. It is what it is. Nobody knew Joe Burrow's name, you know, Two years ago at this time. So so give it a rest with that. We can have big blow ups from the quarterback position. Nobody was talking about Mac Jones in the first last year. I mean, come on now. Um, and Damn we'll get straight. to that in a second. And the uh, I'm sorry. He is so fucking good at throwing the fucking football. He's accurate. He checks every single box. Go watch my draft profile video. I did on him for 30 minutes. I just gushed about how good he is at everything he does pretty much. Um, yeah, he's he's a star. He's a legitimate superstar. And the fact that like there's still people pockets of, of uh, Twitter and stuff kind of pushing back on this notion – Look, they can do it, but they're going to end up being wrong. I I, will, I stand so strongly on this, as strongly as I've ever felt about anything that I'm not, you know, that I haven't seen with my own eyes. Uh, um, all right, so we'll move on. I know, yeah. I, I know, I, I hit it hard. I'm sorry, but it's like, fine. first of all, I feel you gotta, like you got to put your stamp of approval. And I feel like guys. we fucking hit on it, and now everybody's going back and saying, "Oh, well, I think it's Zach Wilson." It's like, well, yeah, look, we said it two months ago. So, and I get it. Like, we're not a big channel, whatever. But like, come on, give us a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stroke our ego a little bit when we can. Number three, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, we need to have a little bit of a Good. back and can, forth. Can, I'm talking way too much right now, uh, but I have to explain this one because I, I went to bat for this pick, and I want to be clear, this is not this does not follow my quarterback rankings. The guy I'm about to say, he would be my fifth quarterback in this draft. Mac Jones would not be my number three quarterback in this class, but Mac Jones is going to go to the 49ers. The Explain. 49ers traded up for Mac Jones. All right, and and I'm sorry. There's too many dots that I can, and I, I said it on the live stream right as I like because I had to record another live stream after the first live stream that went horribly wrong. Second one didn't go better because the audio was out for the first eight minutes. Anyway, uh, I, I I tried to kind of explain how I was connecting these dots with like, okay, what is what is Kyle Shanahan like? What is he where what has he had everywhere he's been other than RG three, which we know now was a was a Snyder move. Snyder made that trade to get RG three. Other than that, everywhere he's been, everywhere he's been successful has has been a Matt Ryan type has been a pocket passer where he can he can create a scheme and he can have a quarterback put in there and he says hey make your read make your throw follow the system Kirk that's Cousins. what that Kirk fucking Kirk Cousins thank you yes that's what he likes and I'm like he's he, I guarantee you he looks at Mac Jones and he sees Matt Ryan and I know that's not where the NFL is going I understand that that's not where the rankings are going to be and I'm not going to sit here and say I agree with it there's issues with Mac Jones game that I really have that I've heard nobody talk about and that's fine maybe I'm wrong we'll see honestly I'm probably going to be wrong because Kyle Shanahan is an offensive mastermind and he's going to make Mac Jones look really fucking good but Mac Jones the pick tell me why I'm wrong because Listen, listen. There is a there is a very strong narrative push going around right now that Kyle Shanahan is in love, and John Lynch is in love with a Mac Jones. Yeah. And to even back that up, we had two pro days that, that happened today, Alabama and Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And who did Kyle Shanahan and GM John Lynch go visit? Mm-hmm. Mac Jones at Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh, they currently hold that number three pick. You, I mean, you got to believe that's where they might go with it. I think they're. I think I think Mac Jones is going to do well in that scheme just because it is a great offense. It is a great team. It is a very good culture to step into with a Kyle Shanahan-led team. Yeah. I do not think he should be the third quarterback taken off of the board, though. I think Mac Jones could show flashes. You know you know what you're going to get. He is a very – I said it a while ago. He's a very sure floor quarterback. Yeah. And in going to a dream scenario like he could at the 49ers could very well arise to the occasion and be a better version of a Jimmy Garoppolo health intact you know let's just say that i think it's got to be justin fields though justin fields today um unnamed gm i always hate how they do that because that's just how it always goes that he said one of those gms said that he had one of the most impressive pro days he's ever seen though i think justin fields has shown up time and time again and you know i just i I hate the narrative i'm totally okay with zach wilson being the number two quarterback as he should that's where my rankings are Mm -hmm. but it felt like justin fields is just taking just gut shot after gut shot and is slowly falling. And I think a lot of people are forgetting that he is a very talented quarterback with a very high ceiling in this class. And I, I've heard some say that he's, he's their fifth quarterback, that they'd rather have a Trey Lance right off the rip. 
than a Justin Fields. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're gonna get look. I, I and I do agree with a lot of what you said. I don't. I don't want to be on here being a, a Justin Fields hater. I, I obviously do see some deficiencies in his game, and and I definitely I, I strongly look at him as a prospect. Could, had, does have a high ceiling? Has a very low floor to me as well. Could go either way. We'll see what happens. Did you see uh, the Mac Jones overthrow today, though? I don't. The thing I don't watch the pro days. I, no, I, I no. I'm just saying Mac Jones had an overthrow, and mm-hmm. Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick are attending. And uh, Belichick, I see that. I Belichick see that, yeah. was just look shaking his head. Like, <laughs> no, he literally shook his head. Here's, no. Here's the thing. I, I, that's something I, I mentioned in my because I did a Mac Jones uh, draft pro. No, I didn't. I'm going to. I'm working on it. Sorry. Uh, but I, when I do do when I do play that video, out, I'm going to talk about how I don't think he's as good of a fucking deep pass deep thrower as, as everyone says he is. I watch a lot of throws where the quarterbacks, where the wide receivers wide fucking open. First round wide receivers, no matter what fucking year you go to, whatever game, it's going to multiple first round wide receivers, and I see them wide fucking open, and then I have multiple Jalen Waddle throws where he has to stop and turn around and like go back to the ball. Yeah. And look, it is what it is. I, I definitely see the the hype with a, a Mac Jones, and and I I get it. Um, but I, I understand where you're coming with the Justin Fields. To me, if I'm the 49ers, I, I will probably wouldn't trade up to three. Just to to me, it's not worth it to trade up for any of those guys. If I have Garoppolo and I can at least, well, I don't know. Garoppolo hasn't been healthy. He has he's we, underperformed. We are in a new day and age to where if yeah. you don't have the the top guy, if you don't have a top five it's over. quarterback, yeah. and in, in your head, you yes, you realistically think it's over. Yeah. We got to make the move. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm kind of fumbling my words because I do agree with everything you said, and I don't want to endorse Mac Jones like I believe in it, like because I don't. I just, I'm connecting dots, and I think that's what happened. And I know a lot of other people have have also said that. I want everybody to know you can go look at the live stream that I did as it fucking happened. I have not heard that from any, like, that was my thought. And then I've heard other people say that made me feel a lot better about it. I'll 100% own that. When I heard Chris Sims talking about it, Chris Sims and Kyle Shannon like this, and he talks about, hey, I don't know anything, but I know my friend, and I know what he likes, and he broke down every quarterback that, that Kyle Shannon has ever had broke down the RG3 thing broke down all of it and, and came to the conclusion yeah it's Mac Jones yeah I listened to that and I, I definitely took it for what it was and, and I, I do I do agree and I think that's what's going to end up happening listen it's going to be a quarterback right. and assuming that Trevor and Zach are off the board yeah Mac Jones is one of those next three guys that's that's there. We'll see. And we'll move on to number four. Yeah, I know. We got to keep uh, it rolling. No, no. We're gonna, we'll move on to number four with the Atlanta Falcons. We said going into this that we're not going to have trades. I truly believe that if a if Mac Jones does go at the three and a Justin Fields is starting to make this slip, if you will, uh, at t- number four, the Falcons are going to trade out of this spot. But given no trade base and given what it is, and I can also see the Atlanta Falcons taking a Justin Fields, mm-hmm. riding out what they could with a Matt Ryan that's left, and maybe, maybe this could be the – the best move for Justin Fields and an Arthur Smith combo going forward. Yeah. Listen, there's a lot of offensive weapons that the Falcons present. There's a lot of good things that Justin Fields will be able to step into. Yeah. And why and not? And time to, to, uh, to I mean, he's going to sit behind Matt Ryan for a year or two. Yeah. That realistically, at least one. Uh, yeah, that's why I actually would have taken Trey Lance because I do look at Trey Lance as maybe a little the bit prototype. higher ceiling and, and, you know, just a prototype big arm kind of kind of guy. And if I know he's going to sit behind a guy like, like this – you know, I, I look at – well, I'll put it this way. I look at Trey Lance very similarly to the way I looked at Jordan Love last year. You know how much I love Jordan Love. I like Trey Lance actually a little bit less than Jordan Love, but in the same realm. And I, I wanted Jordan Love to go to a place where he could sit for a year or two. was hoping it wouldn't be behind a, a an NFL MVP. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I want that more. So at, at for the Falcons, I was hoping you would take a Trey Lance here for the Falcons. But I get what you're saying. You think there's going to be a trade. You think you think Justin Fields deserves to be the fourth, the third, really, but fourth in this uh, mock because I put Mac at three. So 100% get it. I like it. Uh, the Falcons, I think if they sat, they probably don't go quarterback, in my personal opinion. But uh, we're also kind of I trying just, to. I know. Well, I mean, there's also a storyline we can well, put. I, where I, it that's that's why I went quarterback because there is a transitional state with a new coach coming in. You don't know really. What what you got going for the future? I don't. The Falcons do not have a Super Bowl window in the next two years with a Matt Ryan. No. I'm sorry, you don't. Yeah. It's it's a lame duck period, if you will. Yes, you have a very formidable quarterback who still has some good years left, but if you don't have a window, I, stagnation, complacency, it doesn't sit well with a lot of places. Yeah. Let alone an Arthur Smith, a new coach who may want to make that move. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And they, they go they go offensive line so often, <laughs> and it just it wasn't going to be wide receiver. No, it can't, yeah, it can't be can't wide be. receiver. There is a chance for a Kyle Pitts. I'll mention that. Yeah. But 
I don't know. Yeah. All right. We'll move on to the Bengals. And I know there's been a lot of Jamar uh, Chase hype here a little bit with, you know, the, the, you know, this is Joe Burrow. We got it up there for a reason. Uh, the, the, the hype is real for a Jamar Chase to go to the Bengals. I don't think they need a wide receiver, really. They got a T. Higgins last year. It was pretty good. And, I mean, I, I think they're okay at, at the wide receiver position. And they really, really need a tie, a tackle. So, Panay Sewell is the pick. I think positional need is going to be the biggest factor here. They're going to take the top tackle available at number five. At, yeah, at number five. And I actually believe, really, really believe in this. I don't know what happens at number four, but I 100% believe in this, this Bengals taking uh, Panay Sewell. Yeah, I, I slam dunk this year, um, and I don't even care. We can go back to the Falcons for a split second and mention if the Falcons take tackle, if the Falcons take Panay Sewell, it's Rashawn Slater going to the Bengals. I agree. I and, really and, do. And the reason and they're close. Do that is they are close. Yeah, they, are, they are very close. They've, they've bridged the gap a lot more than in my eyes than what I thought they would because I had Sewell very, very high, but after yeah. going back and looking at Slater and specifically what he was able to do against a Chase Young type guy, yeah. th- they're very close. For sure. But you have to protect your asset in a mm-hmm. Joe Burrow. You have to protect your future franchise. Mm-hmm. And listen, assuming all goes well and he's able to come back from this injury mm-hmm. and rebound well, get the tackle there to, mm-hmm. to help him out. You have a Jonah Williams who we've just gotten to see get going. Get your other tackle. You have your franchise line that you can start hopefully building mm-hmm. and then m- really make a push. And yeah, I don't, I don't think you draft... Um, Wide receiver. I, I like a Tyler Boyd a lot, and I mm-hmm. really like um, T. T. Higgins. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. All right, Dolphins at number six. Hey, I wanted him at three. I'm taking him at six. Jamar Chase going there. Uh, look, Jamar Chase to me, look, and I know a lot of people disagree. A lot of people I really respect would disagree with this statement. I think there is a significant gap between Jamar Chase and the rest of the wide receiver class. It is what it is. I'm, I'm taking Jamar Chase. I think he's a superstar going to my Miami Dolphins. I'm hyped about this one. Yeah, it's it's a shame that we feel the same on so many different issues <laughs> like that because I, I feel like it's Jamar Chase and everyone else. For the longest time, everyone was saying Devontae Smith, the new number one, Jalen Waddle. Wow, he's so electric. Yes, all those statements are true, but y'all forgot about the guy who was doing just single-handedly beating yeah exactly that's just how it is it's jamar chase right there and i think i think you got the guy that you were going to get no matter what and you're able to move down and acquire assets i I truly believe it it was either penesul or or jamar chase at number three we trade back to six and still kind of i I feel very similar chance you could get penay yeah exactly i feel very similarly although at the same time i just think it's we're not quite making that decision but it's still one of those two guys and hey i'm fine with that 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 works out great uh moving on to the lion oh it's your turn sorry no you're good uh well number seven Detroit Lions uh lack of talent all across the board right here you you know you still haven't even hit the floor where you can start biting kneecaps yet so you're gonna get there <laughs> I think you do land a true stud of a defensive talent and this is a guy that I have been harping on uh not harping on uh, praising for yeah. the longest time now I have just been behind this guy since day one it is Micah Parsons linebacker out of Penn State yeah. I think he is a true bred pro bowl stand-up linebacker exactly what you want for a captain of a defense mm-hmm. and Detroit is going to land a really good one in this. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, and it's a guy who you you feel like the the ceiling hasn't even been touched. Like you feel like the ceiling is just so fucking high with this dude. And at the worst, at the absolute worst, he's still a really really good player. Uh, yeah, I absolutely agree there. At number eight, and we just dis- I'm gonna actually let you take this one because we disagreed on this one. You, you made yeah, this pick. Uh, there's I'm there's a reason this I did this one. Eight Carolina Panthers. I have Kyle Pitts here. I don't think Matt Rule, after seeing the way that the quarterback goes, mm-hmm. yes. No trades involved, so I I, th- I think the Panthers are a team that could make that jump to four and go get a Justin Fields really kind of guy. Yeah. But listen, versus a Trey Lance, Project, Matt Rule, Teddy Bridgewater, I think that they sit that one out and they go get one thing that Teddy Bridgewater really, really loves throwing to is a tight end across the middle, really short, keeping it safe. Mm-hmm. And what better one to go get than Kyle Pitts? He is an offensive freak. Yeah. He would fit well into that system. And they, on paper, have one of the scariest offenses when you look at weapons solely it would be something special. And then you get to save another year and maybe get the quarterback next year. Yeah, look, I, I totally get it for, uh, you know, I, I, first of all, Kyle Pitts starts to fall when, when you talk about him at eight. And Grin, I think his, his you know, floor, or excuse me, ceiling as far as where he goes is probably Dolphins at, at six, realistically to me. And may, I know some people have said Falcons. I don't think he goes that high, but he could. Uh, so I guess the ceiling is, is four, whatever. Either way, um, Kyle Pitts there adding just another weapon to that offense. I I disagree. I would I would have probably gone Trey Lance if it was my pick, but it was yours, and and I totally get it. Superstar of a of a tight end. Are you worried about the tight end? Because this is the, it's funny because the only negative about a Kyle Pitts, right? Realistically, like the only negative you consistently hear is not anything about him, but the tight ends that have gone in the first round in the past. 
Do you yeah, worry about that th- at all? There's definitely a, nar- a strong narrative to that, but I'm able to spin that off in my head and say that Kyle Pitts is so much more than just your prototypical tight end that we've yeah. seen getting drafted. He's more than a TJ Hawkinson coming out of Iowa. Hawkinson's really starting to hit his stride, too. He's more than a Noah Fant coming out. Yeah. Um, give me. Uh, there, there have been some busts. When you uh, OJ Howard is he more than OJ Howard, Evan Ingram, you know, guys like yeah. that. Yeah. Look, I, I totally get it. I think he, I think he is. Um, it's just, it's just scary because I, I remember really loving all those guys too. Granted, not to the same level as a Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, legitimate top ten. I never saw T.J. Hawkins as a, as a legitimate top ten. Although I thought I loved him. I really thought he was good. Thought he was very close to uh, to Fant. He went twenty. That's about where you know I thought his range was. So, so I get it. Um, yeah, we'll move on with Kyle Pitts. Uh, this was my pick. Broncos taking a cornerback here, adding to that defense. And this is this is where we get. Hey, you can give us some hate for this one. That's okay. I'm putting Caleb Farley, cornerback, uh, to the uh, Broncos. I think he's the best cornerback in the class. He does have the back surgery. I, I do. I do. Hey. It's okay. Hey, hey, look, I took him number. I took him as in a top ten pick. pick yeah. It is what it is. I I, I understand. Hey, we're going to give our mock. We don't we don't hear anything from other teams. Nobody's calling us to tell us some yeah. some secrets. So we're going to base it on our assessment. We base, we and our what the team needs yeah. versus our positional hey, and guess values. What? We were really close. We, we, we hit on a lot of uh, – we, we were pretty close we'll last get year. Some, we'll get some flack for some of these. Yeah, but it's if okay. you go back and look at it years from now and see who hit, who didn't hit – Listen, these mocks are never right. Let's Listen. be honest. All right, so give us give us a little bit of uh, leeway here. I, and I look, I'm just I'm sporting a guy that I really believe him, Caleb Farley. I know he has the the back thing that's definitely bringing him down as far as like he's having a serious back surgery. But dude ran an unofficial four two eight before doing this back thing. He's a physical freak. He he, I think he's the best corner in this class, and it's a really good corner class in my opinion. So yeah, I'm taking him to to the Broncos. I'll just move on to number 10. Yeah. <laughs> you disagree. That's okay. No, That's fine. I, I just, no, Caleb Farley is going to be a first-round corner taken. Yeah. And depending on where other teams value that, I could totally see that. Yeah. You know I have a different cornerback one, though. That, that you have a later. different – you have him at three, right? Or probably even – I have Farley at three, yes. Yeah, yeah. I have Farley I got you. at three. Yeah. Um, number 10, Dallas Cowboys. Your offensive line took so many hits last year. And listen, this is where we get a little crazy because I just realistically don't see a way that Rashawn Slater falls this far Mm. based on the hype that I've heard around him. But this is where we have Rashawn Slater going because Jerry Jones isn't missing this one. You know Mm. that if you have Dak returning and you have so many decimated pieces on your offensive line that you've lost, whether it be to injury, illness, whatever the case may be, free Mm. agency, (laughs) go get Rashawn Slater right here. Instant plug and play day one, protect Dak. Yeah, absolutely agree. Rashawn Slater at ten for the Cowboys is a steal. A plus. Rashawn Slater, I mean, that's that's likened to a Larry Larry Tunsil going falling out of the top ten, right? Yeah. Like, and granted, there was other reasons for that, but yeah, that's a super steal. Rashawn Slater deserves to be in that you know top five conversation. Realistically, there's just going to be too many quarterbacks in other positions that go. Rashawn Slater is a superstar. He's, I mean, he shut down. Only guy in college to shut down Chase Young. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. Love that pick a whole lot. Why uh, you mention Laramie Tunzel? It, it, it made me think that it just automatically listen, he's made just me think. The, he's just on the brain. Bro. It made me think brain. that <laughs> him hitting a gas mask bong <laughs> yeah. is the best thing to ever happen to y'all's franchise. Best thing to ever happen. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> um, all right, moving on with the Giants at number eleven. I'm taking Jalen Waddle. For the Giants, wide receiver fault. I understand. Hey, nobody thinks there's going to be, you know, one, only one wide receiver in the top ten. Hey, there's a lot of good players in this in the top of this draft, and I know it's not like the best draft in the world, but it's a really good one. And yeah, I do think it, because it's a pretty deep wide receiver class, teams at the top that could be thinking wide receiver probably going to go another direction. You know, realistically, if there's a big need there, that's why that's why Bang- Bengals don't take wide receiver. But with the Giants here, Jalen Waddle to me is a huge, huge steal. Uh, Jalen Waddle is a superstar. I, I think you know he he could realistically be Tyreek Hill. He could be. Yeah, I'm not saying it will be, but he could be. And uh, Giants need a player like that. Well, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap it up with our one, two, three at number twelve with the Philadelphia Eagles. I said they're going to go wide receiver, and I think they get a stud of one Heisman winner and Devonte Smith right here. Yeah. Listen, I'm I'm led back to believe last year with uh, Henry Rugg, C.D. Lamb, and Jerry Judy. They all fell. They all fell. They all fell. I, th- they all fell, but they all are Henry Ruggs. We'll see what happens in the future, yeah. but very good talents on the field. Yeah. The the fact that this wide receiver class, some have said that is just as deep as last year's class, if not deeper. Yeah. It's going to make some of these names fall. I'm yeah. sorry, that's just how it goes. 
you you you're content. You can reach at the guy at six, or you can be content with the guy you get at twelve. I think that's what the Philadelphia Eagles did was a, a smart mm-hmm. business decision here. And Devonte Smith and wraps it up. The thing long. is, they get Devonte Devonte Smith at twelve in our mock. Granted, I understand probably you know maybe he's gone by then. That's a, that's could have been the guy they took at six. Yes, it really could have been. So that could they just could have gotten an extra first round pick to do that. Hell yeah. Uh, we'll move on with the Chargers here. Uh, look, their their offense looks pretty good. I may have considered wide receiver if one of those top three fell, but I, I don't think there's one that goes in this range. So I, I went with a uh, corner here, Patrick Sertan. Yes. Baller. Baller out of Bama. I mean, just add, add another piece to that defense. This is going to be a defensive-minded head coach coming from the Rams. He's going to be, I, I think, adding pieces. I considered some other guys here, and we'll get to it uh, as far as guys that I definitely thought about, but Patrick Sertan needs to be a top 15 pick in this draft. I, I think, you know, he's, he's a superstar. He's a stud. I thought there was a chance that they could go prototype defensive end, one of those real physical freaks that we've seen that we'll, we will mention later. Yeah. But their secondary has taken a lot of hits. A lot of these guys are getting older, and we know the drop-off that happens at that, mm-hmm. a, at, that at that stage. So they get it done here. My only worry about Sertan is that, listen, in some very big games speed. against some very – it's not speed, it's performance against high-level yeah. talent at times. Kyle Pitts dominated the man. Jamar, Jamar Chase dominated the man. Yeah. You know, there there are times in certain games where he has risen well above and far exceeded any expectation you could ask him to. But sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, sometimes when the lights are brightest, you didn't get your best version of what you could out of yeah. him. Still a very good corner. He is my number two cornerback. Okay. And that's how it is. And I'll go to number 14 and give you my number one cornerback. And it is solely because I'll take I'll take all the heat. I'll take all the flack. That's well, it's fine. on the team that's drafting it. I just it is my there. Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> And as many of y'all, if you have watched us for this long, you know how disgruntled I get whenever every year we take corner after corner after corner, and they just don't hit. They do blah, 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 blah. Well, go figure. Jacob gets the Minnesota Vikings pick, and what does Jacob do? He takes cornerback J.C. Horn out of South Carolina. It's my cornerback one. I think that a lot of other people's boards aren't going to look like that just because the hype around the man hasn't been. It, it started really strong this past mm-hmm. few weeks whenever his pro day came out and all these numbers are coming Blazing. out of him lining up on tape across from Jalen Ramsey looking good. Mm-hmm. If you go watch the film, you will be even more enamored by him. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, he is physical in your face. He he has the swagger. He has the, the jaw to back it all up. He does all of that. If anything, he's a little too physical. I see that being a bad thing. Maybe he gets too many flags thrown on him. But for the Minnesota Vikings, who were, we got Patrick Peterson for just a a year or two that we can talk about and then see that, you know. But listen, a Mike Zimmer defense, our team does not succeed without that. People want to blame Kirk last year. It wasn't really the offense. It wasn't. There were times where, yes, that was a problem. There's moments where it's like, hey, man, I'd really like my $40 million quarterback to go get us a touchdown here. Of course, of course. And that's – but – But at the end of the day, it is a Mike Zimmer, old head led defense. And I think that he is going to fall in love with the physical, the fast, the strength on a J.C. Horn. Yeah. And that brings us to the fall of Trey Lance going to the Patriots here. Trey Lance finally hits where he's going to go. Sorry, my dog is barking. It is raining. I don't know if it's been hurt. Like, I don't know if uh, it's going to pick up on the mic or not. Uh, but we're just going to move forward with that. Um, yeah, so Trey Lance going to number going to the Patriots at 15. I like this pick a whole, whole lot. I, I think, you know, I think Trey Lance, first of all, I do view Trey Lance as a guy like I, I've compared him to uh, Jordan Love a little bit, and I don't think it's a fair comparison because they're different players very much, but I view them both as huge projects, right? I, I view Trey Lance as a big project. Some people might disagree with that. I think you go to a Patriots system where you already have a guy in place in Cam that you would hope can sit there for a year. They're probably going to carry three because you still you still have the Alabama quarterback who, you know, okay, backup. We'll see what happens with them. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your or Auburn quarterback. So I was about to say, don't you say know. Stidham. <laughs> Stidham. Stidham. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and then, I, yeah, I think there's a real chance that the Patriots would be a team that, that drafts a quarterback. They're certainly in play. I don't care what you say. And uh, Trey Lance, you know, 15, I think that's right where his range should be, although there's certainly a chance that he goes top 10. And, hey, I argued for if the Falcons are going to take quarterback and those three are off the board, I, I would probably want him to sit behind Matt Ryan for two years, and I would probably be take that over a uh, Justin Fields. It, and that's purely situational. I do have Justin Fields higher than Trey Lance, but purely situational, I would have I would have been okay with that. So I'm a big fan of you know I'm a big fan of the upside, and we'll see what happens with them. I expect us to get shit from this one. 
Okay. Because of the fall of Trey Lance. Okay. Not that Tra- if, if Trey Lance is here for the Patriots, right. they should take him. Hey, if we and get Shiver, it's your fault. You should have taken him at eight. Listen, you're right. <laughs> you're right, but Shit I just him. don't know what's going to happen <laughs> with it. I just I trust the Josh McDaniels, Bill Belichick-led Trey Lance thing than I do what a Matt Rule might, could, maybe do. You, you know, you're, you're sitting okay. Hey, listen, if you want to shit on us, more than welcome, Okay. More than welcome. We it, the comments help us. So even if it's negative, it's fine. Oh yeah. Just b- press the like button and then say whatever you want. Um, you can let it rip. But just so you know, he could have taken him at eight for the Panthers. I took him at fifteen. If I don't take him at fifteen, he's fallen to twenty. So uh, could have been fact. worse. <laughs> but the Bears aren't getting that lucky. Uh, all right, we'll uh, move number on. Number sixteen, Arizona Cardinals. I kind of have a surprise pick here. It came yeah. out of, it, it, but it came out. An electric pro day, a, crazy one a very physical freak, and yeah. I think it only helps out that because I don't know where the Cardinals are going to go. They have a lot of boxes checked. Yeah. Offensive line, possibly. I could see that, no For problem. Sure. But it just depends. I have Jason away out of Penn State. Listen, electric, fast, physical freak. I think you can plug him in on that defensive line, and he can do some crazy things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get it. They um, lost Hassan Reddick, too. Yeah, look, I get it. We're going to talk about some other guys I would have taken before. And, and I get it. This was your pick. Good. I, Mo- yeah. Respect it. Yeah, good player. Uh, moving on to the Raiders. I, I think Quiddy Pay has fallen a little bit for a lot of people, right? Quiddy Pay's talked about. I saw a mock where he went four. Top 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen him top 10 a lot. I'm sorry. I, look, he was never going to be a top 10 for me. I did a draft profile that I've recorded, but I haven't edited it yet. So that's going to be coming out this week, actually. Uh, so I did a draft profile on Quiddy Pay, and, and I talked to I, He's not top 10 pick for me i'm sorry he's not and i was never gonna mock him you might have but i was never going to so that's half of half of this mock was guaranteed never going to be quitty bay but i'll take him here mid round to the uh to the raiders and the raiders make a whole lot of sense first of all they need help on the d-line and they they like the they like the potential guys like they like those type yeah. of players i feel like quitty bay has a ton a ton of upside don't get me wrong i get the top 10 hype i just don't agree with it ton of upside super raw prospect the Raiders seem like a team that would definitely take the upside there there are there are landing spots in the top 10 that I can entertain oh sure, you know, of, course. of course there certainly is there I mean there's always a need for that but it just depends uh, yeah I, I think this is a great move right here though I don't think it's yeah. bad at all so I guess I get your Miami Dolphins yeah. at what is it? this is 18 and they are getting one of my favorite players Love overall it. the Joker is his nickname it is Jeremiah Wasu out of Notre Dame Seeing the guy play is just fun. You just forget that you're watching football and you're just watching him the whole time. He is fun. I think y'all cannot go wrong there. Yeah. Hey, it's I, gonna be if you're able to land a Jamar Chase be happy as shit. and the Joker, stop. Happy man. as shit. Uh, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out a different channel, but it, this guy does really good stuff. If you've ever heard of Brett Coleman, uh, go watch his video on the Joker. He he just breaks down why he's gonna be so good, and I couldn't agree more uh, with with Brett Coleman on that one. It, he's just he's a phenomenal player. He fits the Dolphins scheme really really well as an outside linebacker who can cover tight ends who can cover slot receivers he has the speed who can play the run really well he does it all very very good prospect who i mean honestly this might be a fall like you could you could realistically argue that this is a fall for him based on some people's uh you know assessment so we'll, i've we'll, seen him as high as detroit yeah and it would not shock me a bit no. uh that could be the surprise pick we we had a different surprise pick but yeah that could be uh we'll move on with the washington washingtons and elijah uh, i'm ver, ver, elijah vera, tucker. vera tucker i always struggle with the middle name <laughs> elijah vera tucker usc offensive tackle just makes sense to me that they're gonna go offensive lineman no quarterback here to take right uh no do they need wide receiver you know there's a you know i would argue there's some guys that could go in this range to me, you don't really need it. Uh, off, you don't definitely don't need defensive line. Could they go corner? Yeah, probably they could. But they 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 signed the big free agent at corner. To me, this was the position that makes the most sense. Offensive line and Vera Tucker for me, my board is the number three uh, tackle in this class. Yeah, there's there's a gap here though. I mean, there's a oh, gap. There's gap. a huge gap yeah. between a Panay and, and there's a this is a deep tackle class. Don't get me wrong. There's it a is. there's a lot of really good tackles. Like it's not like last year where there's a lot of guys at the top and then it fell off a little bit. This year, I feel like there, it's deep. There's a ton. There's a I ton of guys that are going to go first and second. The top, and then after that, even in, even getting into the day two picks, you have a ton of guys. legitimate guys that I call plug-and-play starts. Yeah, so you can put them for there, sure. and then if you if if there's a hole there, you can run it. And you're, yeah. You'll be fine. Absolutely. Washington's getting a good one there. Chicago Bears. 
This is a guy that you were very high on. Very high. Um, And listen, I don't agree with the pick necessarily. I think this should have been an offensive-based pick, but this is a guy that you have said has so much upside I, and it, Jalen Phillips. I lobbied for this one, guys. Jalen Phillips. Uh, this is this is the the edge rusher out of Miami, and his name. He wore number fifteen, but it's not Gregory Rousseau. Uh, yeah, this dude is a baller. He's a guy who comes comes from USC and and actually went to Miami t- to go to college. He he'd given up on football, gets a chance to play in twenty twenty, and lit the world on fire i think he i think he displays everything he's my top edge rusher by the way he's my top edge rusher in this class i know i picked quitty pay ahead of him i I picked that because of upside for quitty pay uh but right now i think day one of the 2021 season he will be the best rookie edge rusher i'm not saying the upside for other for some other guys certainly there quitty pay could absolutely you know could absolutely surpass him gregory or so could absolutely surpass you don't have to backtrack no but no i'm i'm standing by day one he is the best edge rusher in this class class i think this is a absolute steal for a for a bears team and i get it you you could absolutely go offense yeah. for a lot of different ways i i not don't quarterback think here yeah yeah there's just not a quarterback to take i i had to put it because to me he is a top 20 talent in this class and goes 20 so technically counts we're good <laughs> it's your your pick with the colts oh yeah uh colts jalen uh mayfield michigan this is another tackle another another uh gotta michigan guy Costanzo. gotta Very replace Costanzo. yeah yeah so so it is is what it is but you just take another michigan tackle is really really good i'm not gonna sit here and, and say that i study the tackle position at a in a deep deep level but i you know i've, I've watched it a little bit I, I michigan was one of those guys like this is one of those guys i knew about during the season and i don't know about a lot of these guys during the season so i'm, I'm excited about him and uh, yeah colts are just adding to a great offensive line so great move so a lot of ways here for the hometown tennessee titans to go I went Greg Rousseau. I know you're not as high on him like we, we just talked oh, about. Okay. I, th- I think he is a good talent. I think they need to shore up that defensive line. Yes, they probably need to shore up the secondary more so, but there's not too many. There's a safety out of TCU that I wanted to put here. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's... Oh, he fell out of the class. Did he fall out or did you put him at all? Uh, uh, we'll talk about it later. Good. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he may have. I'm not sure exactly. That was one of the spots that I could have plugged him in right yeah, there. Yeah, you're fine. You know, then there's the wide receiver vibes for the Titans. And Elijah Moore hooking up with A.J. Brown. Ole Miss wide receivers running that. There is the sour taste of an Isaiah Wilson missed tackle that the Titans could do. Titans are a good team. They have holes, though. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where they're going to go. I don't think the defensive line is where they should necessarily, but I could see them going defensive line in a Greg Russo. Yeah, I, I first of all, I absolutely agree with the the position, at least defensive side of the ball, because of all the guys they lost in free agency to the def, you know from the defense. Yes. Uh, I absolutely could have seen safety here, and that make, that would have made a lot of sense. I think, you know, the Titans, are, can, they can find a good safety in the mid-rounds. I feel I feel pretty confident in that. I, I don't hate this pick. And I did a draft profile that's already out as of recording this so you can check that out and uh and I, I break down hey what i think about him i definitely see the upside for Gregor. so to me he's a he's a luxury pick type of guy who you're hoping for upside i see a much lower floor than i do for like a quitty pay who i also see yeah. as a big upside guy but to me quitty pay is still going to be a like at the absolute worst he's a solid rotational starter that just never develops into a superstar Russo could be out of the league in three or four years if he doesn't develop. I, I, I'm like, and maybe that's a bold take, but I'll, I'll sit here and say that's just my, that's my assessment of the player, and it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, shout, I definitely shout get the out level. Trevon Morig. That is a safety out of TCU. Yes, we don't have you going in, the, in any of these later picks. It's just because safety is such a positional base that some teams, especially these later ones too, already have wrapped up one, mm-hmm. and you can find later on in yeah. day two and day. Hey, it happens. You're always going to have guys that fall out, and that is what it is. When we get into that range, hey, if you're going to give a shit for that. Oh, yeah. If you're nitpicking your us at 22 or 32, <laughs> send me your mom. Thomas J. Waters 18 at Gmail. Run it. You send it to me. I love it. All right, we'll move on. Uh, you did great. Where are we? Okay. Jets. Uh, yeah, Jets. This is this is another one of my guys that I'm taking. Hey, uh, Jets are going to need a wide receiver. They just drafted their quarterback. Uh, you get a you get a Zach Wilson here. Why not pair him with one of the most electric wide receivers in the class, Kadarius Tony, uh, out wide receiver out of Florida. This dude's a dog, man. He's just, he's just, look, he's a raw, raw prospect. I get it. Uh, maybe this is a little bit high for him, but I'm sorry. The upside is just too real. And he would fit the the mold of like the guy that would fit to me of a, a 49er system, right? And that's kind of what they're going to be trying to run in uh, for the Jets, right? 
I, I could see that. You know, you got Denzel Mims on the outside being that big body guy who can also play slot a little bit. And now you have this, like, gadget guy who I think can develop into a really, really good wide receiver. But to me, this could be Debo Samuel. That, that's what he could be. And, and I get Debo Samuel was a hit in the second round. Getting uh, 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 Kadarius Tony in the first here, I think it was a good pick. Listen, it's a good – him and Zach Wilson together. Ridiculous, right? Oh, my gosh, Oof. man. If you're going to start going in the right direction, yeah, yeah make some moves like that. That's Move. how you do it. At least exciting for yeah. the fans. Uh, 24 Steelers, you had many, many – that offensive line got beat up, man. Yeah. Uh, Villanueva retiring is one, and then the Pouncey, uh, I think it's Marquise off the top of my head. Yeah, Marquise uh, Pouncey, yeah. Yeah, the center losing him. So it's got to be offensive line here. Mm-hmm. I have Dylan uh, Raddins. I don't know how to say his last name. Radhoons off the top of my head. North Dakota State, I've seen – some people say that he is the guy who has risen the highest based on senior bowl performance. Mm. And Dude, uh, he was a baller at the senior yes, bowl. Yes, he was a big He's done great things. And I think it's going to be one of those things that solidifies him going to the Steelers at 24. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, going back to the Jags, this is a this is another weird one. I, this is an upside guy for me. Uh, Aziz. Jags uh, always do uh, it, though. Ajulelar. I can't say his last name. I'm sorry. Ajulelar. Edge out of Georgia. I've seen him. I, I you know I'm not going to lie. This is one where it's like I've seen him mocked in the first round a handful of times i i kind of went back and forth on it i'm not sure how i feel about him but i definitely see the upside and uh, this is a guy i just i just think the jags probably go defense here i i think you know maybe they go wide receiver to to pair with a dj shark but i for me you know i already put T- Kadarius tony going and my next guy is probably you know he i wanted him to go to a different team so so yeah, sue me i'm going. taking a z yeah a z's here edge rusher jacks of you know add, add to that defensive line and with the 26th pick, the Browns go DB, Greg Newsom out of Northwestern. Yeah, look, again, another guy who maybe goes first, maybe falls in the second. I'm not exactly sure. I like the upside with him. Uh, one of those traits guys, you know, just has, has all the uh, the main traits that you want to see from a top corner. Can he put it together? Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, and the Browns are a team. It's like, okay, you drafted, you drafted your top corner very, very early in the first with one of the Texans picks. Texans love giving away top five picks, don't they? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Texans shot. Um, and then, you know, you, you get a Greedy Williams. Hasn't really panned out. You you had a uh, Terrace, uh, forget his last name off the top of my head, uh, who moved on to the Cowboys. And now I think they, there is a little bit of a need at corner. So Brown's taking a corner there, shoring up a they position. Need, they need a number two. Yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe Greedy Williams uh, progresses, but at this point, you know, we're not sure what's going to happen with him. He's a, you know, a second round guy. We'll see what happens. Twenty seven, Baltimore Ravens. One of my guys. You get yes. This is a this is a your guy. So I'm going to let you keep talking ah, about him. But like it's, it. it's Terrace Marshall out of LSU. Um, it's totally going to be a wide receiver here. I, I think. Listen, Lamar needs to develop as a passer, and he gets a good one. I've been mocking this in my head for months. Literally, <laughs> if if Terrace Marshall doesn't go to the Ravens, I'm not going to know what team he plays for. It was like <laughs> me mocking Justin Jefferson to the Vikings. You yes. just, I, it was like, this is what I want. Yes. I it, got it. Yeah. Hey, look, we'll see what happens here with Terrace. To me, it just makes too much sense. Terrace Marshall is a checks-the-box player for me. He does everything right. Look, are you are you missing on like the elite, elite upside of like the top three? Look, Honestly, the top four wide receivers that have gone off so far on our board, you know, you, the top three we all know about, and then obviously Kadarius Tony. Does he have the the you know explosiveness of any of those guys? No, but it's really close, and it's just one tier down for me. Other than that, he's just he's a complete receiver, a checks the box guy. You can go to a Ravens team that already has your speed guy in Hollywood, already has your slot guy in in um, in uh, Duvernay, who I still believe. In. I'm sorry, third round pick uh, who I was really high on last year. We'll see if he hits. Who knows? But I still believe in him uh, now you're getting a guy who can kind of do it all a little bit can play from slot can play outside love 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 the upside for a Terrace Marshall and honestly you, you add that to this wide receiver core the Ravens have no excuse anymore like as far excuse me not the Ravens Lamar. Lamar has no excuse anymore he has all the weapons he needs he has good tight end he has a good scheme for the most part let's see what he can do with the with the ball in his hands and not with his legs <laughs> yeah all right uh, I'll let you uh, I'll yeah. let you take over for the Roland next couple states 28 Zayvon Collins, Tulsa, is a very good linebacker. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a New Orleans Saints pick because that's what they do. They, they kind of did it last year later on in the rounds with the Zach Bond. Zach Bond, yeah. Um, I think they're going to try to build up that defense and keep it going. Just because offensively, I think we know what we're getting right now, face mm-hmm. value. you know. Um, sure, it could be an offensive line pick, I guess. There is a chance that with the with the departure of a Jared Cook that I had a baby Gronk, Pat Fryermuth going here. Ooh. I, I, I wanted to say that, but mm-hmm. I didn't. I went defensive side of the ball because that's just where New Orleans usually stays. Mm-hmm. 
I love it. Hey, you got to keep oh, it going. Keep you made a couple yeah, picks I, in I did, I did make a couple. I'm sorry. 29, Green Bay Packers. I swapped back and forth. I'm terrified Tell them what this. you did to me. Tell them so, what you did so to what my what I, what I did, <laughs> What I did was I started off by putting Elijah Moore. That is John's wide receiver. John is very – I like Elijah Moore as well. And that that feels more of the Packer move because they always evaluate their talent differently. And uh, not not to take a jab or anything, but it feels like the guys that primarily aren't at the top, they always have it jumbled just a little bit. I'm not trying to take a no, jab. No, you're good, you're good. So in, in saying that, I gave the Packers Rondell Moore. Yeah. I think he is a true electric stud. I think he would pair well off of a Devontae Adams for what Devontae Adams is able to do. Possession, go up and get it. I mean, he's really evolving into a true top five wide receiver. Oh, of course, Hard yeah. to argue with that. Yeah. Rondell Moore, Packers don't go wrong. They finally get Aaron Rodgers some weapons. Hell yeah. yeah keep I, going. I, I you, got one one. you got one Buffalo more. Buffalo Bills. The running back goes off the board here. They do need a running back. Tell them what you did to me again. Who did I have with this one? You put Rondo Moore there and you I took put, him off. Yeah, because I put Elijah Moore to the pack yeah. and then I put Rondo Moore because there's a chance that Buffalo gets that really star stud one, you know, number two. I, listen, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. The, the reason is we have a shot bet on a running back going in the first. I'm yeah. saying a running back doesn't go in the first round. And I swapped so, it up for So he, we literally, because he made, I'm making the, the last two picks, right? And we'll talk about it. He literally went back and said, actually, nah, nah. Because <laughs> it makes sense. Travis Etienne in that system would be ridiculous. could have been a nausea for that matter but yeah. based on my board the way that it goes travis Etienne, oh my gosh i mean listen 30 to 32 range. is where running back could go it's absolutely goes. his range yeah. yeah i couldn't agree more i think you know they they moved on from a john brown they actually do have a need at that wide receiver two position and they, they to really me do, yes. yeah to me a rondo moore would have been a great fit i would have loved to also seen like even if you switched to elijah moore would have been happy i would have loved that as well uh but totally fine with that we're gonna we're gonna finish it off here uh liam ickenberg a uh, offensive tackle going to the chiefs this is just my next offensive tackle on the board uh, at this point look we we mentioned it earlier there's a lot of guys that are going to go in this range i think and and this is just the next guy for me um, chiefs you have to go there gotta go a line right and then we're gonna Seven finish times. it off with the bucks christian barmore we had to get another bama boy out there um bama is actually underperforming what they usually do with the the uh defensive Listen, side of the ball especially they set the bar pretty high yeah they, they definitely do so first round pick is closed out with a christian barmore right in his range barmore you know has a chance to sneak into the first round but probably an early uh day two kind of guy and and look i, I think you you have uh you have uh dominican sue who is coming back they're one of those teams the bucks somehow they brought got 22 back of their of starters of all their starters ridiculous that they were able to do that but sue is not going to be young forever you get a bar more just to, to add to that defensive line that was so explosive last year he's a he's a three tech he'll be in the middle of that defense and we'll see what he can do i think that's just a you know close it out pick i'm good with it you go with it i'm totally fine with it all right guys that is our mock draft let us know in the comments what we fucked up who do we miss what did you hate the most there's no way to please everybody with these mocks and we are excited to hear a little bit of, a little bit of griping from you guys we hope to hear it at I least. I like it. Yeah, it's fun. Um, hey, that's it. That's the end of the mock. That's the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe. If you made it to this part and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, man. What are you doing? You <laughs> Thank you yourself. so much for watching, guys. Peace. Seven.